This is a 2021 Mercedes GLA 45 AMG. It's a crossover and it's a sleeper. And so in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and review and talk about everything that there is to know about the GLA with AMG goodies. Let's get started. So this being a crossover, there's plenty of passenger space back here. And it's so compact and small with plenty of space that it makes driving through the city extremely easy. Mercedes rates this thing to be able to achieve a 0-60 time of 4.3. It is powered by a 2.0 inline four cylinder turbo that puts out just a shy of 400 horsepower as it has 382 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque with an MPG of 20 in city and about 27 on highway. So let's go ahead and talk about some of its goodies. For starters, the wheels are upgraded. These are the AMG cross spoke wheels. And if you may have noticed, the brakes are upgraded. This is a part of the AMG package. This one is the Dynamic Performance Plus, which gives us massive front calibers, red calibers in the front, and you got red calibers also in the rear. The tires that they're using are Continentals, and these are extremely sticky. And yes, the vehicle itself is all wheel drive. So if you need to swap these with snow rated tire in case you live in a snowy environment, you can. So this one has the aerodynamic package, which includes a front splitter and this rear wing in the back. Other exterior components is the rear diffuser, as well as a quad exhaust tip, active valves in the back, which sound absolutely amazing, especially when you put it in Sport Plus, which I'll cover all the other modes in a little bit. Now, I typically don't cover key fob, but I'm happy to tell you that it does have a special AMG labeled key fob, and it's actually fairly small. You have your release right here for the valet key, unlock and lock, no power start, unfortunately, but can give you access to the trunk by simply pressing on the button just like so and yes you can also close it as well just like that and you also got your panic button right here to locate your vehicle faster and just like any ordinary car was equipped with a key fob you could simply unlock your vehicle by having a key fob on you and just pull the door handle and you can also tap this little button to lock the vehicle from the outside and as you saw, we used the passenger rear passenger door to lock the vehicle. So all four handles have this smart key functionality, which is quite nice. And other notes about goodies. At night, the door will actually project the Mercedes logo down here. Other notes about goodies is just like any ordinary modern day headlight. These do support auto high beams, but Mercedes does it differently than other automakers. Instead of flickering on and off, the auto high beams actually dim down nice low to your low beams. So when you're driving at night, it doesn't just turn on and turn off. It actually does like a smooth transition so it doesn't feel out of the ordinary. And then when you boot up the car at night, the headlights actually do this nice presentational dance, which is really nice and welcoming. It's almost like spotlights. Now, as mentioned, this Mercedes does have all-wheel drive. It's combo with an eight-speed twin-clutch auto. And for a crossover that weighs just shy of 4,000 pounds, this thing actually will take corners very confidently. You have the AMG steering wheel, which is wrapped with this nice, grippy Alcantara-like material. Not sure if it is Alcantara, but it's really comfortable and actually adds a nice grip on the sides. Bottom is nice and flat and you have all your important buttons right here and accessible. You have your mode select right here, which is this circular thing that you simply just rotate to switch between comfort by default, sport, and then there's sport plus, which unlocks more horsepower by opening up those valves. And then if you put it in track mode, it just holds the RPMs much longer. And then on the opposite side of the wheel, you have your valve controls here as well, where you can toggle this on and no matter what mode you're in. Same goes for the auto engine start. Other interesting notes and features about the steering wheel is that these little black dots are actually like control wheels. Other interesting notes, just like any Mercedes, the seat adjusters are on the door. Both the driver and passenger size has it on this side. And in addition to that, the passengers also have access to three memory modes they can select. Now the reason why Mercedes always likes putting the seat adjusters on the door is for a couple of reasons, but the main one is primarily if you wear like a big large watch, you don't have to reach through that gap. It's easier to access this way. I'm used to adjusting seats down below, but that's Mercedes reason why it controls on the doors. It just makes it easier if you, in case you're wearing a watch. And yes, both the passenger and driver's side seats are heated. 
not ventilated though. Now you may have noticed the seats are different. That is because these are actually Ricardo seats. And this all varies to person to person, depending on their body type. For me, I really do like these seats. These things are absolutely comfortable. I just like the fact that they hug you and just I just feel more protected, especially since they give you more security and control since they basically just hug you in tight. Now the materials is leather and more of that steering wheel Arcantara with some red lines here and there. Looks really nice. I like the fact that these holes are right here. From the exterior point of view, it definitely does make the vehicle look more sporty. Now onto the back seat. This is what I mean that it's an amazing crossover because of its size. You can sit two adults back here comfortably. I'm not a very tall guy, I'm about 5'8", but I feel confident that anybody who's six foot, six foot two or six foot three shouldn't have any issues because I have a ton of headroom right here as you can see and plenty of leg room as well now cool things back here you'll find is not only does the material also match the ricardo seats which is a nice touch thank you mercedes for doing that you can find the same material on the door as well everything just feels high premium nice to touch there's two air vents back here that follow the same fighter jet theme in the front but down here you also have access to two usb c ports for fast charging and you also have a household outlet back here to charge like a laptop or something on the go i I also like the fact that you have old snap handles right here you can actually grab onto. And if you fill this center arm piece right here, you not only have a place to rest your arms, but you also have hidden cup holders right here. Just like every German vehicle nowadays, they like to hide these cup holders and I like it. And then the center seat can also fold individually, just like so. So if you need additional cargo space to like have poles or something to run through the passenger seat back here, you can do so without having to sacrifice an entire seat or you can fold it all these seats down entirely for a flat surface stepping back outside the car there's three different ways to open up this hatch door compartment forgot the name for it comment down below in the comment section to uh, correct me but you can either press the button back here like a, an ordinary modern day car you could open it with the remote as you saw earlier or you could just have the key fob on your person and just do this with your leg and it opens up just like so. And yes, you could repeat the process to close this way as well. So the cargo space, these are the numbers. It's really roomy back here. I like the fact that it has this little cover right here to cover up anything that you might have valuable inside. And unfortunately there's no spare, but at least Mercedes does offer a inflation kit. There's a 12 volt outlet over here on the side as well as some small compartments. And if I were to guess how many golf bags I could fit in here, I could probably fit one or two if I put them diagonal. But if I remove this cover, I could probably fit like three golf bags back here just fine. So cargo space isn't an issue. It's actually really good for a crossover. Now back inside, the glove box has a lot of space. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's nice, roomy, while still keeping things very nice and compact. The bottom part of the seats, I forgot to mention, can also extend for your legs. So this is, again, a personal preference if you need it to get comfortable. At night, the dome lights inside the vehicle do automatically turn on as there's like a sensor right here where if you move your hand somewhere in the middle trying to reach or grab something it will automatically turn on the dome lights at night and will automatically turn off as soon as your arm is away from this general area which is quite nice and actually works really well from the passenger point of view they'll be looking at the mercedes autograph right here that's some mercedes vehicles have been integrating recently on their windshield then if we open up the center console right here there's additional USB-C ports and a good amount of space back here. You have USB-C ports over here as well, and it does support Apple CarPlay. There is a wireless charging pad in here as well. And then you also have access to these 12 volt outlet right here for like a radar detector or something. And then another most important in enemies is uh, the sign visors does have a full mirror with a light illumination on top for both the driver and passenger side. Now the infotainment system can be controlled three different ways. You can use these little dots I told you about earlier about the steering wheel. I can use this touchpad right here, tap home or tap the little shortcuts right here. The volume controls are accessible right here as well as the steering wheel. And these little pad right here, this is just a part, a place where you can actually rest your palm if you're actually using the little touchpad now the infotainment system is actually really nice there's a bunch of different themes you could go through there's a lot of information that i wasn't expecting this car to show you like if we go ahead and turn on the vehicle you can navigate each menu with these little dots right here so this one will navigate the infotainment system right here and this one will navigate the little center display you have in the, right in front of the driver's side you have access to a bunch of different modes and literally you could do a lot of things. You could switch it with the RPM gauge, 
tire pressure, boost gauge. There's like, you can really customize this thing. You even have the map right here if you like. And you can simply just slide to go through different things. You got the home button, which gives you access to not just the radio control, media, you could go into a more in-depth theme that you wanna customize it to. Trip, performance. This will show you a ton of data, but obviously it will show you more data on this display right here. So if you go on performance, you have access to all of this. You can also make it full screen too, if you like. Engine, which will show you like your horsepower, torque numbers, MPG. Everything is just insanely customizable. And a cool thing is, it's uh, similar to like my Tesla as a fine example. You actually have a web browser right here. So if you really have no other device to use to browse the web, you can always just use the AMG web browser. But it's cool that you can actually see the weather on your nearby and such, because this does have 4G connectivity as you see right here. Other cool settings is you can find it in the quick accessibility. This does have lane keep assist, as well as active steering assist, so it does have a lot of safety features as well as adaptive cruise control. You also have brake assist, traffic light view, blind spot, which just does have blind spot monitoring on the sides. Rear cameras, you can adjust the seats. So many settings. I could literally spend like a whole hour going through this, but the cool one can be found in the lighting tab where you can actually fully customize the ambient lights in here. It gives you access to this color wheel and it really does spice up things, especially at night. And you also have your owner's manual, which is also nice. So this, does, this display, I guess I mentioned, can be controlled right here. Or as soon as the display detects your finger going closer to the display, you'll see, notice that text will actually get larger because it, it's noticing that you're approaching. See, you could just do that. Or again, you could control it with these little dots right here on the wheel. And you also could adjust all these air vents as well as close them if you don't like them. The modes can also be accessed in three different ways too. You can rotate the little knob, which actually has slippery mode. Individual, this is like your personal one. Comfort by default, you can also adjust it. Sport, Sport Plus will open up the valves. It even tells you a little brief summary of what it does. Race mode, which is hold the RPMs much longer as I previously told you. And then it does have Engine auto start, you could disable that right here, as well as the valves. And you also have the valve controls right here too, so it's on the passenger side, so if your spouse is annoyed by the valves, he or she has access to it right here, which is kind of funny. Yeah, this car is very customizable. You could personalize it to your liking and take advantage of all the unique features and modify it to your personal preference. So driving the AMG, GLA, put it on sport mode so you can actually hear the exhaust. And then when you brake, it actually like downshifts. And then sometimes it even pops. So there's a lot of backfire. So for a crossover SUV, right now we have it on sport plus. It really does hold the RPMs as well on Sport Plus. And that's aggressive compared to track mode. But whenever I'm driving alone, I really do have a lot of fun driving this thing. AMG did it right in terms of tuning this vehicle. Honestly, for a vehicle that has almost 400 horsepower, everything is really controllable. It has an insane amount of torque. And the engine note, especially when you open up those valves by putting it to like Sport Plus, I find an example, that's my favorite mode so far. I know this was track mode. If you switch to it, it will just hold the RPMs much higher. In other words, you'll burn more fuel. If you're okay with that, you may like it. But I think for Sport Plus is the right balance. Not only do you hear the personality of this inline four, but the downshifting that this twin clutch transmission has to offer does it super quick. It does not feel like I'm driving the crossover. I even like the red line right here on the steering wheel. It just adds a nice touch, reminding you that this isn't your ordinary crossover. Although, the thing that does bug me is the turn signal. It's just your generic turn signal for a Mercedes-Benz. I was expecting something more calm, more toned down for this thing's personality. But accelerating... Sounds great. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Even when braking sounds absolutely amazing because it downshifts. It just downshifts so well. And then it has this weird feature where when you stop at an intersection, 
it will actually show you the crosswalk automatically. I'm pretty sure there's a setting you could disable this if you don't like it, but I like it personally. And the turbos are extremely responsive. Again, this is definitely a sleeper. This thing will easily get up and go when needed to make some safe passes and such. And if you're on a track or something, you have a bunch of track performance settings right here you could adjust. And once you're done from tracking your car, you can always go get some groceries, pick up the kids from school, as you have all the important safety features, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, and all that good stuff. And if you're not driving the vehicle joyfully, it can get good MPG. There you guys have it. I hope I was able to lend you a hand in terms of shopping for your next vehicle in case you're in a market for one of these. Now you know how it's like driving it, some cool things about it, so you really understand if this is really perfect for you. So if I helped you in any way in your car shopping experience, I would greatly appreciate it if you could actually leave this video a like as those help me out a lot and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of car content and tech content just like this. Now I recently picked up a crossover not too long ago. It's an EV. And in case you want to know how that experience has been like after three months of owning it, you can go ahead and check out that video over there. That is my three month review video of my Tesla Model Y. And the video next to that one, that's just a video YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.